How can we build friendship skills in five to seven year old boys? That's what we're going to be exploring in today's episode of Pookie Ponders. Let's dive straight in. So in today's episode, we're going to be exploring the intricacies of friendship skills in five to seven year old boys. Obviously, lots of this will be applicable elsewhere, but they're our absolute target demographic today. So whether you're a parent, a teacher or someone who is just simply passionate about nurturing young minds, then this episode is going to bring you some practical ideas, some food for thought and support you in supporting the skills development that our five to seven year old boys need in order to help them nurture those lifelong connections and skills. So we're going to start off by thinking about structured play activities. Engaging in purposeful play is not just fun for children, it's a really vital part of their development. Um, Structured play activities are going to provide a framework for our children to participate in cooperative team-based experiences, fostering the growth of essential social skills. These activities act as building blocks, constructing a positive foundation for meaningful social interaction and positive friendship. So what might that look like in practice so some things you could try team building games so incorporating team building games like the human knot where you'd have a whole bunch of kids standing in a circle linking their arms with someone from across the circle and then working together to untangle themselves Um, you could try collaborative art projects where you're going to initiate kind of group art projects where the children are going to collectively create something like a mural or a collage to encourage some teamwork and shared creative expression or you can do things like take it outside and do an outdoor sports challenge organizing sort of sports teams type challenges um, and you might have like relay races or mini football games that's going to promote kind of teamwork and that element of friendly competition there's a lot of other ways that you could introduce structured play but never underestimate the the power of play and structured play to help in the support of the skills that our children need and particularly today where we're thinking about friendships. Next we might think about teaching social skills which again can of course be done through play but explicitly teaching these social skills is, is crucial for the development of these positive interactions that we're looking for between our boys to enable those friendships to develop and to then persist. Um so we are maybe going to need as their supporting adult to to discuss and actually practice those fundamental skills such as sharing and taking turns and expressing emotions and conversing as part of that friendship. We should never assume that these skills are just kind of inbuilt and that we're born with them. We're going to need to actively teach them, explore them, interrogate them, wonder what they're going to look like for the children in our care. So what's this going to look like in practice? This might look like role-playing scenarios, the old favourites. So you might engage children in role-playing scenarios where they can practice social skills in a fun and supportive environment. Make sure it feels non-judgmental. Make sure it's okay to make mistakes and to to explore. But fun role-playing type scenarios, this can also be done. You could equally like bring along the toys and do the role-playing between the different toys and have them talking to each other and thinking about how uh, the the conversation might happen, how we might do our turn-taking, maybe even think about a little bit of conflict resolution as well. We might explore these things also through social skills games. So we might use um, board games or online games that might focus on social skills and reinforce concepts like things like empathy, active listening and cooperation, those friendship skills that we're looking to support and grow in our children and young people. We can also look to notice where those skills are already happening in games that are already enjoyed and being played, as well as perhaps noticing where these skills come up in books we might be reading or TV shows that the child might be be interested in. Or we can go really hardcore and actually have themed social skills lessons. So you would do something like integrating social skills lessons into themed activities, connecting the skills that we're looking to promote to real life situations that the children might encounter and actually really explicitly do this as a full on planned out lesson rather than little bits kind of here and there. These are skills that all of our children are going to need. And particularly if we're facing challenges with a particular group, with a particular class, teaching this as a whole and thinking all together about what are our boundaries in friendship what skills do we need what does that look like let's practice it let's have fun let's create this non-judgmental approach and let's have a unified approach to it so we all know what our reference points are and what we think this should look like can make a really big difference can kind of press the reset button a little bit if you've got challenges within a group or within a class The next idea that you might explore is the use of a buddy system. Again, buddies, mentors, coaching between peers is something that comes up often as ideas uh, for me for 
different topics and it can work really well here as well where we're looking at these young friendships. So implementing a, a buddy system and pairing children up will actually offer mutual support between both children and creates that sense of security and individual friendship which then can sort of work its way into perhaps a larger group. And again, particularly if we've got some sort of challenges going on within a larger group, being able to think who are the individuals here who might need extra support for things to work here or where are the challenges um, and buddying them up, making sure that they're able to support and mentor each other can then help them to integrate better within the whole group. And in terms of how we practically make that work and a few little tips for this, it might be something that you're already doing, but having weekly buddy activities, making sure this isn't just a name. We've not just said, oh, this is the buddy, but we're actually going to really scaffold and support that. So you might assign weekly buddy activities where your pairs are going to engage in joint tasks, working together, maybe doing sort of problem solving, that sort of thing. And it's going to foster that deeper connection over time, really enable that relationship between these two people. So then they can become part of that whole group, but with this kind of sense of security and someone who's got their back and a, a friendship I know I can rely on within it to help them within that. We can have buddy check-ins, so we can encourage buddy check-ins where our pairs are going to discuss their day. We might do this as a regular part of our daily routine and they might share their experiences. This is going to kind of prompt open communication and friendship and explore like this, this real important thing of, of friendship, that reciprocity, looking out for each other, care of self and care of others, and having it as part of your regular routine. It can be really short and um, can be a nice way to do things. And then another thing you might think about doing is having kind of buddy celebrations. So where you're going to recognize and celebrate positive buddy interactions. So where you see it working well, the behavior and the attitudes which you're hoping to promote when you see that, let's celebrate it and really reinforce the importance of supportive friendships. And within those buddy pairs, they can celebrate each other. They can be encouraged to notice, to recognize, to compliment, to praise, to enjoy when their buddy does something that makes them feel good as a friend to really help promote those positive behaviors within that pairing. Another perennial favorite comes up as the next idea, which is social stories. So social stories are narratives that are going to illustrate positive social behaviors in this context and highlight the benefits of friendship and aid our children in understanding and internalizing these concepts. So we're using these social st stories as a kind of scaffold for the behaviors, the attitudes that we're hoping to promote and develop. So this is in practice going to look like things like interactive storytelling. We might create interactive storytelling sessions where the children are going to actively participate in the narrative, discussing the characters' choices and their implications on friendships. So going that one step further with these social stories, we might encourage artistic expression, having our children create social stories of their own through drawings or doing little skits and plays um, or through role play and encouraging creativity and personal connection to the concepts there. Um, and we might have story time reflections. Reflections always a really powerful activity and some people people kind of think this needs to come later on but even very young children are very capable of this sort of reflective uh, type practice and it's a great skill to embed from really early on so we might follow up those social stories with age and stage appropriate reflective discussions that are going to allow the children to share their thoughts and relate the stories to their own experiences. Another important element that we're going to need to think about as we're developing the friendship skills in our young boys is emotion recognition. So we're never too young to start learning to name so we can tame our emotions. And within friendships, learning to understand how other people are thinking and feeling is one of the bits that can prove really challenging. Learning to read the minds of others. I still find it really hard as an adult. And so teaching children to begin to recognize and express their emotions as a starting point is going to be really crucial. It's going to help to foster that empathy that is such an important part of friendship and it will help them to effectively communicate within the group. Lots of the challenges that we might see with our younger children in their friendships where the group might become challenging here is that lack of understanding of each other, which can sometimes come from a lack of communication. If I've been made to feel angry because of something that a friend has done, but I haven't been able to, to name that, to articulate that, to share that, to communicate that within the group, it's going to be very difficult for my friend not to continue to do the thing that's making me feel that anger. And so learning to name those things, learning to be able to share them, to express them, to explore them and be curious about them is really fundamental in enabling these friendships to work over time. 
So things that we can do to help with this, which starts with helping our children to recognize and name their own emotions, their own feelings. We might introduce emotion chart type activities. So emotion charts where a child can point to or mark how they're feeling at different times, which is going to encourage that emotional awareness. Um, we might equally give them colors that represent different emotions or just a number on a scale of one to 10 as they, 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 they think each morning, you know, let's all just have a think at the moment, where are we right now on our one to 10? And we give that some context where, where one is, is feeling very, very worried or stressed or anxious or angry or some of those difficult feelings that can feel a bit challenging for us. And 10 is absolutely having the best day that I ever had. Where are we today? And let's have a little think about that and what might help with that and what's caused that and getting really curious about these things are some of our next steps. But just at the beginning, be able to point, being able to give it a number, being able to choose a color or perhaps pick an animal, whatever works in terms of representing what we're feeling here. Those those feeling words, those emotion words, also very important. Children are never too young to be adding to their emotional vocabulary and you can expand it as big as feels appropriate for the child. Every time they learn a new emotion word, that's a new tool in their toolbox. Being able to tell someone how I feel is incredibly powerful. So being able to give children those words and explore with them what that word means, how that feels for them, how it might feel for other people. What does it feel like in their body? What sorts of things make that happen? These are all really powerful things that will enable our children to become more emotionally literate, which in turn enables them to be a better friend. They can better communicate their emotions. They're more able to empathize with the emotions of others over time. We can also do things like playing emotion charades, which can be great fun. And more organizing a, a game of emotion charades where the children might act out different emotions is going to help them to recognize what these things might look like in other people and also think about what they feel like in themselves. And then finally, again, going back to the idea of a bit more reflection, we might keep things like feelings journals where our children might draw or write about their emotions, their feelings, their experiences and create a bit of a personal connection with how they are feeling and that emotional expression. Another place that can work really well is a safe space within our classrooms and our teaching environments to explore friendships and friendship skills and so on is our circle time discussions. So we can use these discussions to, to create a really supportive environment for children to share their thoughts and their experiences, both positive and as long as we appropriately scaffold it, the more negative and challenging ones as well. And that's going to foster communication skills and also that sense of community within the group, within the class, which can really help us to recognize early where there might be challenges within our larger friendship groups and also to explore what we can do next to problem solve together and this puts everyone on the same team when we do this in circle time facilitated by a supporting adult then when problems do arise and we're able to tackle them in a neutral kind caring problem solving type environment then we're often able to overcome issues and barriers before they escalate where these friendships can get a little bit more explosive sometimes when the kids try and sort it out themselves out on the playground and actually there's nothing wrong and we would encourage the children to look to explore and express and uh, work with their friendship issues themselves as well but we need to know when to bring it back and when to be curious when to explore with a supporting adult as well because sometimes our children don't yet have the skills the understanding or the knowledge to be able to deal with friendship issues as they arise yet these are skills that take time to learn so you can do things like having themed discussions in your circle. So structure circle time on a particular day around a specific theme that might relate to friendship and allow the children to express themselves in that focus context. We might look at particular elements of friendship that really matter. Think about the behaviours, the attitudes that we're looking to see. Perhaps the ones that you're noticing are a particular challenge amongst some of the children in your care right now. We can do a bit of a show and tell where we actually integrate sort of show and tell sessions into circle time, but giving our children the opportunity to share items Items or stories specifically related to their friendships. So often promoting some of the really positives um, about their friendships here, really celebrating what's going well um, for themselves in their friendships and maybe celebrating things about their friend as well. Um, and then we might also think about friendship agreements during circle time. So we would collaboratively within the circle think about friendship agreements, thinking about our sort of shared values. What are the things that matter to all of us that we all want to agree on and share that 
expectations to enable those positive interactions? Which are the points at which we all agree? What do we think makes for good friendship here? What are we going to role model for each other and try to aspire to for ourselves each and every day? Another set of skills that we're going to need to actively look to promote if we're going to encourage these positive relationships within our young boys and indeed within everyone. But, but I'm often asked, how do I deal with the, with the conflict, with the, with the anger, with the aggression that can sometimes come up when our young boys are struggling? So our conflict resolution skills are really crucial. We're going to need to explicitly think about how can we teach these. So teaching children simple conflict resolution strategies is going to really help them to navigate disagreements constructively. It's so important. Those moments when we fall out do not need to be the moments when this friendship is over and we walk away from it. Learning to manage that conflict, learning to repair those ruptures is absolutely hugely important part of friendship skills development. So one effective approach might be the use of I statements where instead of saying something like you always take my toys, a child might instead express their feelings using an, an I statement such as I feel upset when my toys are taken. This is going to help the child to communicate their emotions without placing blame which is often where things can spiral and erupt and escalate and that kind of lack of blame placing like that is going to foster more positive open dialogues during conflicts which means they're much much more likely to be resolved so encouraging the use of those I statements I feel like this rather than you did that so I feel this way is going to empower the children to express themselves and promote that healthier resolution of disagreements other practical ideas include conflict resolution role play of course we're going to think about our role play again we might have our children or our toys role playing different scenarios that depict common conflicts you'll see the same things coming up again and again and use that as inspiration here allow the children to practice and to develop those conflict resolution skills where possible instead of telling them what to do guide them towards finding their own answers the best conflict resolution strategies and statements are going to be the ones that the child begins to find and feel for themselves so we might nudge them in the right direction we might brainstorm with them and have some ideas but if they can feel an ownership of those ideas if they can use their own words then this is much more likely to feel usable and actionable when they're actually out in the real world having these challenges in real life we can also have designated peace corners, little spaces which are neutral um, and which are known to the children as places that we might go when we want to resolve our conflict. Um, this might also sometimes include the involvement of uh, adults, guidance from support staff, for example, in order to help to de-escalate and resolve any conflict that is ongoing. Um, and we can also explore conflict resolution games. So thinking about board games or online activities that might involve resolving conflicts as part of the gameplay to, to make learning a little bit more enjoyable there. So finally, before we wrap up, we're going to have a think about praising positive behaviours. So recognising and reinforcing positive friendship behaviours that we're hoping to see can be a very powerful strategy within your classroom or indeed within your home. So here are some ideas that go a bit beyond sort of just external incentives. I'm personally not a massive fan of the old reward charts and so on. We're looking really to try and develop and create that kind of intrinsic motivation. And this is going to sort of build a, a lasting foundation for positive interaction actions within a wider friendship group. So we might have a class compliment chain. Um, I love this idea that was shared with me by a teacher. So creating a compliment chain where each time a positive behaviour is observed, um, a link is written um, and the compliment is added to the chain. So like a paper chain, but each one's got a compliment on it written by a child about another child of a positive friendship behaviour that they've seen or experienced. And the chain's going to grow throughout the week or the month and it's going to really sort of visually represent that sort of collective positive contribution um, of each individual to the group or to the class. We might be specifically looking for things that we've agreed in those previous circle time activities. What are our, our values? What are the behaviours that we're all looking for here in terms of good friendship? And it might be that when children recognise those in each other, that then they create those additional links for the chain. Um, friendship circle time, we'd already sort of discussed, but here we might actually sort of dedicate a portion of circle time to friendship spotlight or something like that. And in, in enable individuals to be recognised specifically for those positive social behaviours. So this might come from other children or it might come from the adults in the room as well. And that would include things like highlighting, I don't know, sharing or helping others or showing kindness, just 
recognizing and celebrating the the, the positives that we're seeing in each other. It's a, it's a can be a really nice opportunity for for the group, for the whole class, to express gratitude um, for each other and to recognize those behaviors that we're really hoping to see. Um, and then back to an idea that was mentioned earlier, but kind of creating a collaborative art mural, but giving it a particular spin or a theme. So initiating some sort of collaborative art project where every child is going to contribute to that mural or to that collage, highlighting specifically the positive behaviours that we all hope as a friend to see from our friends and in ourselves. And this could be like an ongoing project that's going to happen over time and would serve as a bit of a, a collective visual reminder of the efforts that everyone in the class, in the group is going to, to try and sort of support and maintain those positive uh, behaviors and environment for friendship to flourish. Okay, so we've we've rattled through the world of friendship for five to seven year old boys and, and, and perhaps many others as well. If you're not particularly thinking about your young boys, I hope there were things in here, but I was thinking really just to try and dip into some of the areas that people have told me they've found challenge when we've got our, our young boys who might be struggling in their friendships um, and in their groups and hopefully some practical tools in there for you to take away and to give a go. Um, as we wrap up this episode of Pookie Ponders, um, just remember these, these friendships, even in very young children, they are the building blocks for a future where our young hearts those little hearts are gonna not only just navigate but also like really thrive in the complex sea of social interactions these are skills and strategies that will last a lifetime so it really is worth that that bit of kind of focused attention now when our children are very young i hope that there were some helpful ideas in here for you if you liked what you heard today then please subscribe and please share my work this and other things you can support my work further should you wish to by joining me over on patreon where you get early access to all my resources and the chance to influence what i work on next today's episode was a direct request from one of my patrons in fact or you can invite me to speak at your next event or in your setting either virtually or face to face thank you so much for listening and for everything that you are doing for the children and young people in your care each and every day this has been Pookie Ponders with me, Pookie Knightsmith. Until next time, stay curious, stay compassionate and keep pondering. Over and out.